the good Senator Dr. Cassidy. Uh, thank you, Chairman Tester. I'm going to um, probably ask some questions that are kind of 101, just to try and understand. And I apologize if others have asked. So somebody is referred to a cardiologist. Now, the cardiologist has a whole list of things that the cardiologist could order. Does that authorization to the cardiologist's office include a pre-authorization for whatever test the patient, for which, whichever test the doctor would order? I'll ask Ms. Peabody to help with that question, Senator. Thank you. Uh, Senator, yes, that's correct. Now, so now I'm gonna approach this from the other side. There are some providers who are over-utilizers. And if you over-utilize, you obviously have an increased risk of complications. So if somebody goes with chest pain, uh, you get an EKG, you get an echo, you get a treadmill, you get a uh, radionuclide study, uh, other tests, I'm a little rusty on my health care, uh, could they go all the way to a cardiac catheterization on that same authorization? Um, Senator, one of the things that Dr. Elna Hall has actually charged our office with is taking on looking at appropriateness of care. As we look at our future CCN contracts, we know that we've got to find unique ways to better address um, making sure our veterans get the right quality of care. So as part of that, um, we're in the process of developing a uh, strategic plan and roadmap for how we'll be Can, can I stop you a second? That. Yes, sir. Uh, but, but now, I'm just speaking now, not as in developing a roadmap. If I have that pre-authorization for that doctor's office, could that doctor take me all the way to a cardiac catheterization with no review of whether or not that cardiac catheterization would be appropriate or not? Dr. LaPuz, do you want to add? Um, for outpatient, uh, not necessarily. So cardiac catheterization is not authorized for outpatient care. Now, on the other hand, sir, if uh, the veteran went to the emergency room, uh, that cardiac catheterization would be part of the CEOC for that emergency room visit. Now, are you doing, because we also want to make sure that the veteran gets the care the veteran needs, but we also want to be protective of taxpayer resources. Right. And we know that, um, uh, I'm a physician, so I'll just say that, that there is a subset of physicians that will greatly overutilize if there is no check on what they order. Mm -hmm. So is there been, has there any been any ongoing evaluation of the people to whom the VA refers or has in their provider network as to the amount of testing they order and uh, by extension the appropriateness of that testing? So, Senator, I will say that you are highlighting one of the major risks that we see right now. Uh, the good news is that in my charge, as Hillary mentioned, to integrated veteran care on doing more work on appropriateness of care, a lot of this data is already public vis-a-vis -vis Medicare. So we have ways of- I'm with you on that. Yeah. So I know, believe me, I understand, you can understand if somebody is ordering this test you know, two standard deviations more than yeah. everybody else. Yes. And there's guidelines from, you know, the cardiologist that say, no, you should only be ordering it here. Yes. Is the VA looking at that and looking at the, um, okay, this is how much I'm being charged. Uh, um, are you looking at a frequency distribution to make sure that we're only putting people as providers who are ordering tests appropriately, knowing that they could appeal, there can be a review, there may be some extenuating circumstances, but also knowing that some people will order too many tests. So, Senator, we do not consistently look at that right now when we do authorizations, and I've identified that as uh, a risk to veterans, most importantly, because overutilization is not now just a cost issue. Now, let me ask, issue. because I think it was a couple of years ago that I asked the same question. Okay. And so, is there, um, um, and, and I can't blame y'all, I mean, Ms. Peabody is from Tulane, and I will forgive that. I'm an LSU <laughs> graduate, but no, I'm just teasing. You're an LSU, you're a Louisiana person. I like that. But I guess my point is, having raised this issue before and finding that there isn't a, um, some, a, a, a program in place, but like 
every insurance company in the nation has a program like this. Yes. This is not new territory. Um, and and in, the, in the Mission Act, the VA is effectively an insurance company. Mm -hmm. So is there any thought of contracting with a third-party administrator using off-the-shelf tools to allow them to immediately apply a system as opposed to the VA developing their own. I just say that because I don't want two years from now to be asking the same questions and finding the same answer. I think you have the right focus, Senator. I think there are things not only, and I'll ask Ms. Peabody to talk about what we're thinking for the next generation community care contracts with the TPAs, but there are also operational things we can do on just data visibility if we execute it right that will show which providers are high quality, meeting our standards for veteran care, I, and where appropriateness of care measures are deviating. I'm totally with you on that. Yep. But I would like to move from the uh, theoretical to the yes. operational. Me too, Senator. Absolutely. And can you give us a timeline of when you think you would either contract with a third party administrator or be able to use this kind of transparency? Because ultimately, I don't care what you do, you're either spending money, but even even minor tests can have complications. Yes. I, I mean, I can just tell you. You know, you do procedures, sooner or later you have something going on. So, so I'm just sensitive to this. Uh, Senator, there is one thing that gets at what you're asking, I think, that we have put in place. We just haven't implemented it universally, and that's our high-performing provider program. So we are using from both of our TPAs, from TriWest and from Optum, they're already you know, normal insurance industry recognized standards and they've done some customization for VA and you can see within PPMS, which is our internal provider directory that the schedulers use to find a provider for our veterans when they're scheduling, they can see if the provider has that HPP designation. What we have not done is mandated that you must schedule to that or that you have to tell the veteran. So we're working on um, figuring out how we can better optimize that. And then as part of that CCN next gen contract, getting to your question about timeline, I think we will most likely um, put some additional requirements in place under that contract, which will be in place in the next couple of years. I'm not a cardiologist, but I'll also say, going back to Dr. LaPuza's point, just because someone goes to the ER with chest pain does not mean they should be cath. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of other reasons for chest pain that can be evaluated before cath. It also seems like that sort of, and every now and then somebody dies from a catheterization. So it does seem as if you could do a frequency distribution there. I'm just asking that and would ask you all to implement it ASAP um, for the variety of reasons that we've discussed. Um, so thank you.